Hello, everybody. Uh, today I'll be presenting uh, a summary of the new features and some of the enhancements that, are, that will be rolled out in Physics AI uh, through Hyper Mesh version 2024. So here is an outline of my presentation. I'll go over some of the key improvements, which include uh, improved result contours, enhanced quality metrics, license updates, uh, integration with Altair 1. So let's start with new features in version 2024. Uh, a new architecture has been uh, included in version 2024 that results in smoother contours and uh, noise reduction in the results. So uh, to compare, the uh, middle image shows how the uh, contours look before for uh, one of the examples we had, which is an impact case. You can see that there are jagged edges uh, in the predictions, but with the new architectures on the right, you can see that the uh, contours are much more even and smooth um, and match the ground truth uh, closely. There are uh, also a few more quality metrics uh, to aid the user in understanding the, uh, the goodness of the prediction. So uh, I want to take a moment here and explain what these two quantities are. So uh, in the predicted uh, results, which you show at the, at, at see at the top, uh, you can see that the highest hot spot or the highest stress values in the left hand side uh, group, whereas in the ground truth, that is actually on the right hand side group. Uh, so you can make two types of comparisons here. Uh, one is error at the peak value. That basically means what is the corresponding result in the highest point in the ground truth compared to the same point in the prediction. So that's error at the peak. Whereas error in the peak is basically the difference between the highest value of the result in the prediction compared to the uh, highest value in the uh, ground truth irrespective of the position. Um, so the, these quality metrics hopefully help to clarify that. And uh, we also have uh, the percent error calculated on the same value. In addition, there is an R2 mesh uh, metric which essentially quantifies uh, the goodness of fit based on the distribution of these values. And there's also a Sprague gears metric, which uh, converts this into like a 1D flattened out signal and compares the closeness of fit between these two, uh, two results. A new hyperparameter has now been exposed to the users called batch size. Uh, so in batch size, if we draw an analogy to optimization, this essentially means uh, optimizing for a certain number of points together. So uh, you could think of it like four or five variables being optimized at the same time. In physics AI, we look at all the data points uh, eventually. So the batch size just controls how many data points are looked at at one point in time. For example, if you have 10 data points or 10 training samples and your batch size is four, then we will look at it them in the order of four, four, and then the remaining two. Uh, so some from some internal investigations, we have found out that the uh, optimal batch size, which results in the least loss or the least error, is typically between five and 10. So uh, I would encourage Physics AI users to uh, try changing these things. And uh, this should pop up in the model training dialog box. Uh, right where you would see width, depth, and epochs, et cetera. So licensing updates. Uh, Physics AI now uh, draws 75 alter units uh, for training, testing, and prediction. So all three modes draw the same number of units. And uh, Physics AI acts as a solver. So it stacks with itself, and it levels with uh, other GUI products. So one of the major updates uh, in this uh, version is uh, integration with Altair OneDrive. Uh, this allows us to save this project and run the training on Altair OneDrive. So I'm going to show a couple of videos to uh, demo that. Here you can see that a project is being created uh, and saved on, the, on a OneDrive location. Um, and uh, just a verification of that. Now, when we go to data set creation, uh, we can pick files uh, from any location, even outside from the OneDrive. Um, 
and you would proceed as usual. You select the H3D files to be used for training. You can see the log on the right hand side showing the work in progress. Then we go to model training. And select the result, change the number of epochs or adjust the hyperparameters. And then we have certain scripts to submit these jobs either using the CPU or GPU on Altair 1. And then you hit train. So uh, I'm going to jump to a second video now. So let's say you have a geometry here and uh, you want to make predictions on it. Uh, again, I'm going to start from scratch, train a model on Altair 1 drive. You see the uh, icon there showing that it's training on Altair 1 drive. And if you go to the, to the GUI where you can access the files and running jobs, you can even track uh, the log. You can look at the uh, CPU utilization. And should, yep, the job's done now. You can set this to be an active model. You can interact with the loss curves and logs even through the uh, HyperMesh UI. And then you import a new geometry and hit predict. So it's really is a, uh, a seamless experience whether you train this on Altair 1 or you train it locally. Uh, there is also a new element of data visualization when it comes to data set creation. Uh, now, when you create a data set, we display the nodes and elements uh, for each of the H3D files you used in the training. Um, and this is more for the user to make sure that you know the files they're selecting are correct. For example, if you see uh, most of the files having large number of nodes and elements, and then you have uh, you know, another file which has drastically different number of nodes and elements, you can point out that uh, you know, there's something wrong with that particular file. Maybe it does not belong to that data set taken up. Additionally, there is a way to preview these results. So uh, the red square in the middle shows this icon. When you click on that button in the data set creation dialog box, you will see a preview opened uh, in the right-hand side in the second window, a window inside Hyperview. All right, so that brings me to the end of uh, my presentation. Uh, I want to thank you all.